Well, I, you know, I think that 2013 was probably the worst year in the co-op's 150-year history. I think that while we successfully recapitalised the bank, taking us about seven months without asking taxpayers for any contribution, I think the point in your last film there with the Reverend Flowers was probably the low point for me and the rest of the team at the co-op. And it was one individual, but, um, you know, really damaging to the brand, and that's what we're trying to rebuild from today. Well, in fairness to the Reverend Flowers, he wasn't responsible personally for the £1.5 billion pound capital shortfall. No, and I think the point I'm, I'm obviously uh, getting towards is this sleaze and other bits, which we didn't know about. I mean, I asked the Reverend Flowers plus the entire executive team at the co-op group and bank to leave three weeks after I joined because we had found very quickly that the bank was in severe capital um, you know, uh, trouble. Have you settled in your own minds now precisely how the co-op got its banking business so terribly wrong? Well, I think that's part of the, lo you know, lots of investigations that are going on now. So Christopher Kelly is going to come back and report on our internal investigation independently in the next couple of months. And I think that that will unveil a lot of what we suspect has led to what is a, a huge issue within the bank. Wasn't part of the problem that the co-op had become, frankly, just too pleased with itself about ethical behaviour. It was very holier than thou. It seemed to adopt this lofty position that uh, all this grubby capitalism was beneath it. And yet here it was with a chairman that, frankly, turned out to be a joke. Well, you know, I think there is some truth in that, and that's what we have to look at. We have to look at the governance of the business. We have to look at how the business was run, and that's what we're doing now. So when I arrived, as you say, kind of nine or ten months ago, put a new team in place, we have been working night and day to restore what is a fantastic British brand to the place that it should be at and delivering the ethics and values at the coalface in front of customers every single day. And clearly, the business had lost its way. And part of what we're doing today is asking customers to have their say. We are Britain's biggest customer-owned business. And clearly, that had gone out of the window in the last five or six years. As I said in the introduction, you are polling customers. Uh, you want them to have their say. I don't know if we can see that. There we are. I'll hold it up for the cameras. Uh, these advertisements uh, appeared in the national press today. Have your say. Uh, I'm sure many people will respond. What do you expect them to say? Well, I think they will um, come back with what's really important to them in their local communities. I mean, we are Britain's biggest community retailer. And again, I think we've lost our way for that. I don't think we should be playing at being a very big business, even though we are a big business. I think we should be trying to be a, a, a big business in a small business way, one that connects with the local community and one that connects with its customers. And, you know, one of the big, the big um, points in that is that we want to ask customer, when we get back to making a profit, how would we share that? We don't have investors right. and we have customers who own us. Well, let's jump on to that. Um, for years, you have been linked with the Labour Party. It's inextricably woven into the fabric of, of, the, of the court movement. But in today's world, you must have millions of customers who have never voted Labour, will never vote Labour. That's correct. Is it right that they should somehow be sucked up in all this and, and, and the dividends that they could have received passed off to a Labour Party uh, for which they have no sympathy or empathy? So that's why we're asking the question. That's in the poll. So we have, unlike, I guess, other organisations, so not avoided the, the difficult question. If they questions. come up with no, you will break the link with the Labour Party? Absolutely. What we want to do is represent our customers, and we're in the business of business and representing our customers. We've got to get closer to customers, and if... You know, overwhelmingly, our customers come back and say, we don't want the co-op to be involved in politics, then we would be a very poor management team that ignored our customers and didn't answer that call. You are still a very heavily indebted business overall. Clearly, more assets are going to have to go. What's first on the list? Well, we're going to come back next month with a set of figures which quite frankly are going to be pretty ugly based on the recapitalization of the bank and the losses that we've borne. At that point, what we want to present to the country is the financial uh, plan to stabilize the co-op. And at that point, we'll confirm on the shape of the plan, the shape of the business and how widespread that will be. So we're finalizing those aspects now. Now, you're a Scot running a business 
with a very big operation in Scotland. Uh, we heard from Alex Salmon today, and I suspect he's right, isn't he? Scotland without the pound would make life very difficult for British businesses to do business with that independent country. Well, you know, I think this issue is one for the people of Scotland to have a, a person have, in Scotland. have a view on. Unfortunately, I don't live in Scotland, though, so I don't get that But you do run a British business. I mean, Simon's comments today were targeted at British business, yes. at Rump UK business. Yes. He was saying, it's your problem, matey, if we don't have the pound. Is he right? Yeah, well, I think that, you know, taking a more general point on that, I think that anything that would add complexity or extra cost into any business across the UK, I think I would have some concerns about when we're trying to be as efficient as we possibly can. And I think that um, especially the position that the co-op finds itself in, you're right, we have too much debt. We have to broadly make the business far better run in a very short order than anything that provides a macro threat to that. Can I just pick you up on that? specific point. So, an independent Scotland, it has no pound, it has to have another currency. That would impose very significant costs on your business. It would. It you would. wouldn't be in favour of that. I think that would be something we need to look really hard at because that is extra cost, extra um, overall complexity for us. And, you know, I think we've got to see how the overall debate um, moves on. At, at, at a time when you can least afford it. Absolutely.